Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a video for you showing you the products that I use for my bloom pores and I will also show you how I mix my bloom pouring medium and give you those ratios. So I appreciate your viewership, I appreciate that you are here with me. Let's get started. So the first thing in the blooms, it's a blooms one, two, three. There's three steps to preparing for your blooms. So the first the first part is to have your pillow paint. And the pillow paint is a tinted house paint. Um, this house paint is a Durham, it's a wall sheen, it's a low sheen paint, it's an acrylic paint. It's already tinted, so I would pick up the white for my white backgrounds. So that's the first part um, of the Bloom um, products that you need. I usually just um, pour it into a container because it can be very gloopy this is very thick for me i can't work with a thick house paint like this especially for my blooms i need the consistency to be a little bit thinner than this so i use the ratio 450 grams of the house paint and i add 50 grams of water so it's plain tap water if the tap water in your area is good enough to drink then you can use it to mix it um, into your paint. If the um, water in your area is hard water, as we know it, has got a high content of chemicals, then um, you can use distilled water. So I would add about 50 grams of water into my, um, my house paint, and I just slowly combine the two. So this is not a... Um, a fast paced mixing process because we don't want to churn up any air bubbles in this paint so it's just nicely and gently folding the water into the paint I'm happy with that consistency now now this paint is ready for my next painting so I'm setting that aside and I'm going to now mix my pouring medium. So for the pouring medium, you need a polyurethane. The polyurethane that I love to use is the Dala brand. And um, it says on the container, it will say polyurethane hard varnish. You can also safely use the Harlequin's polygloss. Please don't use a polyurethane blend or polyurethane added. Any product that says that is not 100% polyurethane. It's got to say polyurethane on the product. So this one works best for me. And I use an untinted house paint. You must use a clear tint base or clear base or deep base. I use the Prominent Paints um, Roof and Paving brand and even though in the tub or in the container it looks like it's um, white but it's not tinted. Transparent, it's an untinted clear base. So I'm going to use a scale to weigh my my untinted clear base. My scale is on zero. I'm going to pour in 200 grams of the untinted base. That's two parts. 100, 200 will give me two parts. 100 would be one part and 200 would be two parts. So I'm adding two parts of the clear base into my mixing cup that gives me 200 right now I need to add the polyurethane to this um, clear base i'm going to tear my scale to bring it back to zero starting on zero again i need to add one part so that was two parts 200 grams 
100 grams of polyurethane must now be added. So it's two parts to one part. 200 grams would be two parts and 100 grams would be one part. Just about 100 grams. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> 100 grams. Now in total, I've got 300 grams of pouring medium. I'm going to stir and combine them together really, really well. The untinted clear base with the, with the polyurethane. That's it. Nicely combined. Now you have your pouring medium and you can store your pouring medium into a container and you can use it when you need it. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to use two different brands of acrylic paint and I'm going to show you how I mix my colors. So with the bloom technique, mixing your colors is very simple. It's not as complicated as with a regular pour. So the paint, um, the bloom paint is very forgiving. You don't have to worry about um, or stress too much about measurements and so forth. So the one thing you need to keep in mind when mixing your paints is that not all acrylics are created equal. We have a very soft acrylic paint and we have a heavy body paint and then we have um, student acrylics so they they have to be mixed differently with your pouring medium now the ratios that I use when I mix this pouring medium with my acrylic paints they vary between one part of the pouring medium to one part paint when I use very soft acrylics and then for other acrylics, I would use two parts of the pouring medium to one part of the paints. So I'm going to mix the bronze. It's a Dala bronze metallic. It's a very, very, very soft paint. Very soft paint. Half of this paint, you see, it just pours right out of the, right out of the container. Very thin. And I'm going to add the same amount of pouring medium. And I'm going to mix that together. Just look how nice and silky smooth that is. Scrape the sides of your mixing cup. Mix that well together. So that ratio is one to one. When you're using really, really soft paints, the ratio mix with the pouring medium is one to one. Now I'm going to use a thicker paint. I'm using Iris Ultramarine Blue. Just pulling the, opening up the spout. And now I'm going to use, that's one part paint. It's about a tablespoon. I'm going to add two parts pouring medium to that. So my pouring medium for the thicker paint 
is double the amount of the paint, double the paint. Let's stir that together. Just scraping off the sides of the stir cup. So, if you're working with a thicker paint, adjust the amount of the pouring medium. Adjust your ratios. So, for the heavier body paints, it's one part paint to two parts pouring medium. You can go as high as three parts pouring medium as well. So, I'm very happy with my paints. I've mixed up my colors. The pouring medium, I will pour into a container and save it for later. I now want to show you step three. Step three is your cell activator. And for the cell activator, you need Australian Floetrol and you need an Amsterdam paint. The two together makes up your cell activator for blue. So the ratio for your cell activator is one part paint to four parts of the Australian Floetrol. So let's mix that together. And for this I'm going to use a scale once again. So I'm going to, to scoop out 20 grams of the Amsterdam Black. 20 grams it's very very thick there we have 20 grams of the Amsterdam and I'm going to add 80 grams of the Australian Floetrol to that. Let's tear the scale to bring it back to zero and I'm going to add 80 grams of the Australian Floetrol. So my scale is on zero. I need to add 80 grams of the Floetrol. It's okay if you go over by one gram. It's not going to make a difference. So one part paint was 20 grams. Four parts Floetrol. So one part was 20. Multiply 20 by 4 will give me 80 grams. So I needed to add 80 grams of the Floetrol. Now you need to mix that well together. The two together. Once again, clean off your sides, scrape the bottom of your cup with your stir stick, really, really mix your, your products well together. So this is your cell activator. The thinnest consistency of the three. So your pillow paint, your pillow is your thickest. Then next is your colors, which is a little bit thinner than your pillow. And then your cell activator is the thinnest of your three products. So steps one, two, three. One is the pillow paint. Two 
is your pouring medium that you mix with your acrylics. Step three is your cell activator. All right, now you're ready to do blooms. But before we get to the blooms, I wanted to talk to you about the different canvases. What is the difference between a gallery wrapped canvas and an ordinary canvas? So I've got three canvases that I wanted to share with you. So the first canvas is a student canvas. It is a stretched, staple-backed canvas. So this, this one has got a thin edge, a one narrow edge, and it is staple-backed and stretched over a wooden frame. This is staple over a wooden frame. And these canvases are good to paint on. They're, they're good to work with and also are very economical to practice on. So that's the one type of canvas you get. The next canvas is what we call an artist box canvas. And it's got a deep edge. And it is also stretched over a wooden frame. And it is also stapled at the back. So this is a staple back artist box canvas. Now let's talk about a gallery wrapped canvas. This is a gallery wrapped canvas. It is archival, meaning that it has longevity. It also has a deep edge or a wide edge. This canvas is neatly tucked in between your Swedish pine frame and you don't see so many um, staples at the back. So it is stretched um, between two pieces of um, wooden framing and this wood is um, Swedish pine. So that's the difference between your stapled back canvas, stapled back canvas, and your gallery wrapped canvas. You can clearly, clearly see the difference. So I thought I'd just share that with you. All right, I'm ready to do a painting for you, and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.